Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to the Electrical Engineers Academy. Today we are going to talk about the voltage drop calculation. What is it? How to calculate it? What is, it, what is its importance? And a practical calculation example. <coughs> so let's start our today's tutorial. First of all, I'm going to talk about the conceptual understanding of voltage drop. What, what is exactly the voltage drop and why is it important? Second, I'm going to talk about and explain the voltage drop formula and the calculation methodology, how to calculate voltage drop and what factors are involved in the calculation of a proper voltage drop. And finally, I'll give a calculation example to apply the concepts which we, ha which we have learned today. Let's go on to the next section. So, what is voltage drop? A formal explanation and uh, understanding is voltage drop is the decrease of electrical potential along the path of a current flowing in an electrical circuit. This is the formal explanation. But what does this mean exactly? And why does voltage drop decrease when increasing the cable size? To understand this, let's have an overall understanding of the relation between resistance, the cable length, and the cable diameter. Here you can see a depicting picture of the relation between the cable, the parameters which I have just listed. So, you can understand from this basic formula that the, this one is representing the cable, that the resistance of the cable will increase when the cable length will increase and will decrease when the cross-sectional area will increase. So, what we, um, what we mean is resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the conductor, which is the cable in this case, and directly proportional to the cable length. So, the longer the cable, the more resistance. The bigger the cross-section of the cable, the less resistance so in order to so in order to overcome the voltage drop that is happening from the cable of a certain size we have to increase its cross section which will ultimately reduce its resistance and the corresponding voltage drop same thing the longer the cable the more the resistance and the more the voltage drop that takes place in that circuit. Here we can see a sample data sheet of one type of cable for a manufacturer in the market. You can clearly see that as the cross-sectional area of the cable increases, resistance decreases, and ultimately the voltage drop value of that cable decreases. So as we said, resistance is cross-sectional to the inversely proportional to the cable's cross-sectional area and therefore the voltage drop as well. So what is our limitation for the voltage drop? If we refer to the local regulations, DIWA in our case, we can see in section 4.2.3, section 4.2.3, the maximum voltage drop from the point of supply to any point, equipment, appliances, and apparatus connected in the wiring installation shall not exceed 4% of the nominal voltage of the electrical supply. So, the total voltage drop from the point of supply, 
from the transformer low voltage side up to the final electrical outlet or light fitting should be less than 4%. To understand properly this 4% limitation or this maximum limitation, let's look at typical power distribution scheme. We have the transformer giving power to the MDB, then several SMDBs which are feeding final DBs and finally to the final loads such as sockets, equipment, light fittings, etc. So that 4% which we have mentioned is actually from the transformer's low voltage side up to the final load, which is usually after the final dB. So if we name this V1, this is the voltage drop starting from the transformer to the LV panel. That is usually a short distance, 15 or 20 meters. V2 is the voltage drop from the LV panel to downstream SMDBs or MCCs, whatever panel, the next panel after the MDB. V3 in this case is the voltage drop from the SMDB or MCC to DBs or to the loads connected directly to the SMDB. Maybe we have we don't have a final DB connected to SMDB or MCC. Maybe we have a motor. In that case, the voltage drop will stop there because that is the final load. If we have a DB connected to an SMDB or MCC, we go on calcula calculating the voltage drop. The voltage drop from the DB to the final outlet is our number four. So, we calculate it separately, we calculate V1, we calculate V2, we calculate V3 and V4, and that their total should not exceed 4% of the nominal voltage supply. What we mean by the nominal voltage is, if we have a three phase, in our case, in the local ratings, in the UAE or as per DIWA, 400 volts, 0.4 kV and for single phase 230 volts. As you can see here, this overall voltage drop should be less than 4%. So how do we calculate voltage drop? We have a simplified version of the voltage drop and we have an advanced formula which takes into consideration the resistance and reactance values for each cable size. But for now, let us concentrate on the simplified version, which in, men in most cases will give us the required value and we don't have to use the advanced version. So what does this formula consist of? So voltage drop, VD equal MV, this is a factor, which is actually the voltage drop per ampere per meter and is a physical property of the cable. This factor you have to obtain it from the cables data sheet that you are using. Or you can consider a certain type of cable data sheet and use it in your design calculation unless you have a certain cable which is specified for your project. We multiply this factor by the current, I, the rated current, which is the rated load current. If you want to check how to calculate the load current, please refer to my other tutorial. I have done a tutorial video on a simplified way of calculating the rated current. We multiply then by the total length of the cable. This is the total length from point A to point B. So for example, if I have 100 meters separating the MDB and the SMDB, I will write 100 meters. I will not put the total cable runs. For example, if I have two runs, 100 meter, two runs, I will just put 100 meters. The number of runs will be specified in the below section of the formula. It is the separating distance 
between the two points. I hope this is clear. So MV into I into L divided by 1000. All of this we divided by the total number of runs. This will be clearly understood now when we make a practical calculation example. Now we go to a practical calculation example. In this example, what do we have? We have a three-phase load of 15 kilowatt connected using two runs of four current to 25 mm cable. The cable run length is 100 meters. So what do we do first? Let's take out our calculator. As we understood from our previous section, voltage drop equal MV into I into L. So MV is a constant that we take from the cable data sheet. I, the rated current, needs to be calculated. So let's say step one is to calculate the rated current. If you want to understand how to calculate the current, I have a separate video. I have done earlier a separate tutorial on calculating the rated current and selecting the cable accordingly. You can refer to my other tutorials. So let us go on. 15 kilowatt divided by square root 3 multiplied by the rated voltage. Since this is a three phase, we will use 0 0.4, 400 volts. Multiplied by the power factor, we always assume the worst case power factor to be 0 0.8. So our rated current for this load is 27.06, rounded off 27.1 amps. Then we list all the parameters that we have in this example. MV equal 2.7 millivolts per amps per meter. This one, you need to refer to your cable manufacturer's data sheet. Or you can have, as we mentioned earlier, a certain manufacturer that you always refer to this data sheet in your design projects. But usually you have to refer to the approved cable in your project and identify this value from the catalog. Then voltage, as we mentioned earlier here, the rated voltage is 0.4 kV and the length is 100 meters. So let's calculate now the voltage drop. Referring to our earlier formula, as we have mentioned, voltage drop equals MV factor. So in our case, 2.7 multiplied by current, which is 27.1 multiplied by the length, run length from point A to point B, which is 100 meters in this case. All this divided by 1000. This gives us 7.32 volts for one run. As we mentioned that we have two runs of this cable and the number of runs need to be considered in this calculation. So we divide this factor by 2. 3.66 volts. This value is in volts. So the final step is to convert it to the percentage and to understand if this is within our limitation of 4% or not. So how do we do this? We take our 3.66, we divide it by our rated voltage, which is 400 volts in this case. Then we multiply by 100. As you can see here, our 
final voltage drop is 0.92 percent which is within our four percent limitation this is a simple example this calculation is done for every one of the distribution levels which we have identified earlier so from the transformer to your lv panel you identify number of cables and the total load connected to the transformer and you apply this calculation methodology from then you move on from the mdb to the smdb again you identify the load and you calculate using the exact same way and so on and so forth until you reach to a percentage at each level and you add them their total should be less than four percent or now i will end by showing you an example excel sheet that you can use to calculate the overall voltage drop this is a typical voltage drop calculation sheet i believe that each engineer has to prepare his own excel sheet which will be in his own way and in his preferred arrangement so you can see here that for each feeder we are using the same calculation way you can put our formula here for calculating the voltage drop then the percentage calculation will be in this column and the cumulative voltage drop this will add the individual voltage drop for this feeder with the corresponding upstream previous feeder so this is a typical excel sheet calculation we can make a separate tutorial video explaining how to make a professional voltage drop calculation sheet that's it for today Please like, subscribe, and share this video if you have liked it. And looking forward to meeting you in future tutorial videos. Take care.